Algebra 1 students. We're going to use mu um, movie soundtracks again tonight um, to continue our instrumental instead of lyrical music. Lyrical? Is that what you call that? Anyway, we're going to be simplifying radical expressions, Algebra 1 students. So we're going to start with um, some more expressions like the ones from the past two videos. So instead of a PDF of the entire video slides, uh, this time I have two PDFs up there and we're going to choose selected problems from the PDFs. So let's take a look. <clears throat> okay. So here we have simplifying radical expressions, and we're going to do um, some of these. And um, let's start with um, <clears throat> let's start with number one. Let's just jump right in there, shall we? All right, perfect square. That's a factor of twenty. So remember, we're looking for perfect squares and leftovers. You can simplify these. We're not approximating. No calculators. Um, we're not going to have to worry about absolute value symbols. Um, so we're going to leave in radical form, no absolute value symbols, because we get to assume all variable values when we get towards the bottom of this are positive. Okay, so factor of 20, that's a perfect square. Hopefully you found it pretty quickly. It's 4. 4 times 5. So the square root of 4 I can take, that's 2. Can't take the square root of 5. 2 root 5. And we talked about this at least in one class. While you can't simplify these radicals on a calculator, you can check them on a calculator. So when you want to, you can type in the square root of 20 and 2 root 5 separately and make sure the decimal values match. This won't ensure that you have simplified completely, but it will ensure that your value you got is still equal to the original. All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do odds. So 1, 3, 5, and 7... 9 and 11, 13 and 15, and maybe another one below that, but we'll start with that. All right, how about square to 9? Well, that's a uh, 99, excuse me. That's an easy one. 99 is 9 times 11. I can take the square root of 9. I can't take the square root of 11, so 3 root 11. <clears throat> Next one, 420. Okay, so that's, that's getting a little bit bigger. So I'm going to have to go ahead and think about factors of 420. 2 and 2, 10, which is 2 and 105. Okay, so I know I at least have a factor of 4. 105 is divisible by 3. It's um, 35, which is 5 times 7. 335s, let's make sure that's right. 330s is 9, 335s is 50. 330s is 90. Slow down, LeCompte. 330s is 90, 35s is 15. 90 and 15 makes... 105. All right, so it looks like we only have the one double factor. So that means that I have, if I want to write this as two factors, this is 4, and 3 times 5 times 7 is 105. So 420, 420 is 4 times 105. I can take the square root of 4, but I can't take the square root of 105. So even as these get larger, you can still do the math here. All right, factors of 640 that are perfect squares. So instead of prime factorizing, Let's just think of factors. And actually, it came to me pretty quickly. Anybody else? 64 and 10. Now, what if you did... Oh, let me keep my same pattern going here. Use the black one. Okay. 64 times 10. So I can take the square root of 64. I can't take the square root of 10. 8 root 10. Awesome. On a roll now. 1250. Goodness. That's, that's big. So I'm going to... It's not cheating. I'm using a resource. I'm using a graphing calculator. Clearly, um, 25 goes into that. 25 goes into 1,250, and it leaves me 50. <clears throat> What's half of 1,250? Aha, 625. And 625 is a perfect square. Oh, Doctor Who heads. It looks like this is music from Doctor Who Series 5. That's kind of cool. All right, have that play in the background. Kind of gives you a sense of urgency, like we have to simplify these radicals. All right, 1,250 we just said. So I started dividing it down and I recognize that it's 625 times two. 625 is 25 squared. So there's nothing wrong with doing a little bit of trial and error on your calculator to recognize the factors. And I want you just to recognize that you're not looking for small perfect squares here. You want the biggest one you can find. All right. Moving on to ones with fractions. Now, we know that based on our rules of radicals, we can't have this radical in that denominator. So we need to rationalize the denominator. Anybody remember how we do that? We multiply by a value that's equal to 1. 
that gets rid of the radical in the denominator, and that is the square root of 6 over the square root of 6. Now, why does that work? Let's think about that just for a minute. Why does root 6 times root 6 equal 6? Well, if you think about your product of, of um, your, your product radical, uh, radicals property product, I think, or the product of radicals property, you can put this back together and make it 6 times 6, and the square root of 36, 6 times 6 is 36, square root of 36 is 6. So cut out the middleman and just recognize that the, the root 6 times root 6 just is equal to 6. So the denominator of this will be a 6, and in the numerator, the square root of 1 is 1 times root 6 is root 6. So 1 over the square root of 6 is equal in value to the square root of 6 over 6. And you can double check that on a calculator when you come to class. <clears throat> 13 is going to be almost identical. So try it out. Okay, split it up first. I can take the square root of 1, that's 1, but I'm going to have to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 5 over root 5. And root 5 over root 5 is equal to 1. And that gives me square root of 1 times square root of 5 is square root of 5, which it can't be simplified, over root 5 times root 5, which is 5. Now, why can't I divide 5 divided by 5 here? Because that right there, that is not a square root of 5. This is not a square root of 5. Uh, no, excuse me. It is a square root of 5. It's not a 5. Okay, that's not a 5. It's a square root of 5. So this can't be divided. It can't be simplified any further. Let's do a couple of product ones, probably two more on this page, and then we'll do some from the, um, we'll talk about the next, the next type. Square root of 5 times square root of 60, <clears throat> okay? 5 times 60 is 300. So I'm going to put it back together first, see if that helps me. Square root of 300, um, perfect square factor of 300, 100. 100 times 3 gives you 300. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 3, done. So 10 root 3 would match there. All right, let's see what else we got on this sheet. Yeah, let's do two more. Let's do um, 17 and actually 18. So I'll break my rules about odds. We'll do 17 and 18. Okay, not going to worry about... Um, <clears throat> oh, you know what? I lied. I lied. Don't you hate it when I do that? Instead of that, let's do 17 and 21 and 22. We have to have some with, with, with variables in them, guys. Don't complain. Okay, so for this one, let's multiply the 6 and the 24. You might remember this from the one we did on the warm-up. 6 times 24 is 144. So sometimes you'll have a situation where multiplying the radicands gives you a perfect square. And that means this is 4 times 12, or 48. Done. What about this next one? 21 is going to be fast. Square root of 16, 4. Square root of b to the 4th is b squared. So you can cut that, that exponent in half. And I want you to recognize that when you cut that exponent in half, you're taking the square root of that um, variable expression. Okay, looks like we're listening to more Star Wars. This one's from episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Okay, next one. Square root of 81 I can take, that's 9. But I can't take the square root of c to the fifth, so let's break that up into c to the fourth times c. Uh-oh, I can take the square root of d to the fourth, too. Hold on. So I have 9, and I have d squared, and then, so no d left inside. And then what's going to happen right here? Square root of c to the fourth is c squared. So I can take out a c squared, but I can't take out that c. So I have 9 c squared d squared root c. All right, that's that for practicing with the radicals. Let's look at simplifying expressions with radical terms. Let's take a look. Okay, like and unlike radical expressions. Like radicals have the same radicand. Unlike radicals have different radicands. So, examples. 3 root 5 and 4 root 5 are like radicands because they have the same radical value. But... 3 root 5 and 4 root 3 are not like radicals because they do not have the same radicand value. And what you're going to learn in this video is that if I was to want to add 3 root 5 and 4 root 5, you treat it just like it's a variable. Like you're saying 3x plus 4x, which is 7x. So in the case of 3 root 5 plus 4 root 5, it's 7 root 5s. You do not change the radical. 
because as we know, we can't simplify the square root of five. So it has a value. It has a value that's between two and three, closer to two, okay, two point something will be the approximation. So we know that that's a value, root five of itself, and we're adding three of them plus four of them. Look, three of that value plus four of that value gives me seven of that value. And so as I said, you treat it just like it's a variable. Okay, let's try some. <clears throat> okay, which ones do we wanna do? We're gonna do one and two. We're gonna do three and six. And I guess what, guys, that's gonna be it. I'm not gonna push it. We're not gonna have any more than that. Okay, so the first one's gonna be nice and simple. We have six root five minus two root five plus eight root five. Well, that's like saying six X minus two X plus eight X. Well, six minus two would be four, plus eight would be 12. That's an equals sign right there. Equals. So six root five minus two root five plus eight root five is 12 root five. All right, next one. Can you simplify the square root of um, 15? Right here, square root of 15? Well, 15, let's see. 15 is three times five. Is either one of those a perfect square? No, they are not. So we can't simplify that one either. So instead of writing this one as radicals, let's just go ahead and add it the way we have it. So root 15 plus eight root 15 is nine root 15 minus 12 root 15. You know, one way you can think about this is to think that it's nine minus 12 root 15 or negative three root 15. Okay. Um, all right, what's next? Oh, more Star Wars. This time it's from episode one. Okay, let's look at number three. Now this one's a little different. Did you notice what's different about it? The radicals are not the same. So it's, that doesn't mean we can't combine them. It means this one right here that has to be simplified, we gotta simplify it. And it's okay to see or to look for a pattern where you're expecting to see a three, a root three in that simplified form. Because otherwise, why would they have us add these two expressions together if they're not gonna have a like radical? So what's the perfect square factor of 12? It's four. And what is four multiplied by to get 12? Three. So we have our four root three from the beginning of the expression plus two times, now I can take the square root of two. I mean, excuse me, I can take the square root of four, that's two, but I can't take the square root of three. So this number that's already outside in front of the radical is gonna get multiplied by that two and it's gonna become four root three. So what I have here is four root three plus four root three, that's eight root three. Let's do number six. And you know what? I lied again. We're gonna do another because that's just not enough. Let's do eight and 10, and then I'll be done with the video. <clears throat> okay, so six, eight, and 10. All right, so two root 45. Why don't you pause it and try it yourself and see if you can figure out how to simplify that. Two root 45 plus four root 20. All right, well, 45 is nine times five, and 20 is four times five. And as I'd expect, yes, there is a like radical in each one and then a perfect square that I can simplify. So this one is two times three root five, and this one is four times two root five, and so we have six root five plus eight root five, 14 root five. That's not hard at all. Next one. Again, maybe try pausing it and try it yourself. Three root 75, so 75 is 25 times three. 25 times three. <clears throat> All right, and what about 243? Well, 243 is 81 times three. And I do want you to take, once you figure out this one, this nice smaller number, when you have this larger number, I do want you to say, hmm, I bet you three goes into 243. And you can remember with your um, divisibility tricks, if you add these digits, two plus four is six, plus three is nine, Yes, indeed, 243 is divisible by three. It's also divisible by nine. So I can take the square root of 25. So this is three times five, root three, minus, I can take the square root of 81, that's nine, root three. So 15 root three minus nine root three comes out to six root three. Last one of the video, and you can see there's extra problems. You can always use those for extra practice. All right, root 44 minus root 11 
easy peasy. What's the perfect square factor of 44? Four. And conveniently, there's an 11 in there. So two root 11 minus root 11, two roots of 11 minus one root of 11 is a root 11. And we are done simplifying radicals in this video. And I think, I think this is finally the last instructional video of the year. Everything else should be review. Isn't that nice? See you guys in class.